Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to be learning about Objective-C calling conventions for iOS reverse engineering. Now iOS applications can be written in either Swift or Objective-C, but we're going to be looking at an older malware sample today, so it is in fact written in Objective-C. Now, if you're doing your analysis inside of Ghidra and you're taking a look at the decompilation, you might notice a few things that seem funky about it. The main thing to understand is that Objective-C actually uses this special thing called message passing for method invocations. So this requires something called a selector, which is basically just a string representation of the method. So think of it kind of like the method name. And this selects which method that you're trying to invoke for a particular object. And then the Objective-C runtime actually passes this invocation to the correct object object while the application is executing. So we're going to look at a couple examples in Ghidra and see kind of what that looks like and look at these Objective-C runtime function calls and how we can actually follow the control of the program. Now I'm going to pull up the example application that I have for this. This is the Goontact iOS malware family and this is available for you on Malware Bazaar. And I'm just going to jump right into it and open up this executable inside of Ghidra. And if you're not sure how to follow along, feel free to watch my previous video on how how to find the entry point of an iOS application so that you can follow along in Ghidra with me. So I'm going to close it out, this out and let's just go straight into Ghidra. Now I already have a particular function selected that we're going to be using for this example. And this is going to be this blur bottom BG view function right here. And this is going to be inside of this LC action sheet class. And you, you can tell this because of the two colons inside of here. This signifies class name, colon, colon, actual method name. So let's go in and let's take a look at what this code actually looks like and how we can follow along its flow of control. Now I'm going to skip this method real quick and let's talk about this really important function call called Objective-C message send. So that's what this OBJC actually stands for. Now, this is a really important runtime method that's actually going to be causing a function call. So this is going to be sending the actual message that's going to invoke a particular specified method. Now, if we want to take a look at the reference for this, we can open up our Apple developer documentation. And we want to make sure we go to this Objective-C runtime documentation, and then we can find our Objective-C message send function defined right here. Now here's the name of it, but the important thing to note are the actual parameters for this. As I said, this is actually just invoking a method. So the first parameter right here is going to be the object or instance of the class that we're trying to actually call this method on. So this method is located inside of a class. So this is going to be a pointer to the object that actually represents that class. The second parameter is going to be that special selector string that I mentioned earlier. And think of it just like the name of the actual method that we're trying to invoke. And then any subsequent arguments inside of this are just going to be arguments for that particular method that we've selected by this second parameter right here. So let's move on and let's look at a couple examples of this inside of Ghidra. First, we have our message send invocation. This first parameter, remember, is going to be the object that we're trying to call this on. And then this second parameter is going to be the name of the method that we're trying to invoke. In this case, the name is the selector called set hidden. And then we have this colon. The special thing to note about the colons for method selectors is that however many colons there are in the selector is how many arguments that this method is expecting. Now, in this case, we have one colon. So that means that this set hidden method is actually expecting one parameter. And we can see that one passed right here. So now we have successfully chosen what object we're trying to invoke this method on the method name that we're trying to get, and then the arguments that this particular method is receiving. So basically, if you were reading a C style version of this, it would just be set hidden, 
open parenthesis one, close, close parenthesis, but objective C is actually gonna make it look something like this. But now you know that this is just a regular method invocation. Now let's talk a little bit more about what this uvar1 actually is. Remember, this is the instance of the class that we're trying to call the set hidden method on. And you can see, I can press the middle key or the middle mouse scroll bar for highlighting all different references inside of Ghidra. This is going to be our object and we can see that it's getting set one line above. Now this objective C retain auto released return value is another special call. What this is doing is Basically, when you have a new object, the runtime might try to release that object and then we don't actually have it anymore. So it's just a special call saying, don't release that memory and we'll store the return value of the previous function inside of, to inside of this variable. So that means the return value of this function is actually going to be stored inside of this uvar1 by this auto released return value. Basically, just main thing to note is this is going to store the return value inside of this variable. Now we know that the return value of this method is going to be stored in here. So let's see what this white BG view actually is. What this is doing is it's just taking this ivar1 and it's going to be returning it and if we want to know what this id type is this should be another runtime type let me just google this real quick we'll do objective c apple developer then we'll do id class so we have to be kind of specific because this id is kind of a generic term so we want to make sure we're looking for the particular apple developer documentation on this and this is again part of our objective C runtime. This is just saying we're returning a pointer to an instance of a class. So pretty simple. We are looking at this. We have this white BG view class that we're going to be returning an instance of. So that's going to get returned from this method call. And we can go back. Then this is going to store the white BG view object inside of this uvar1. So let's go ahead and name that. I'm just going to name this var white bg view object. And now it's actually coming together and making a little bit of sense. We have the object that we're going to be calling this on. And then this set hidden method is going to exist somewhere inside of this class. But we don't need to worry about it too much because now we know exactly which method that we're trying to invoke. Now, one thing that's interesting to note is you'll notice that we invoked one method using this objective c message send but this other method was actually not invoked using message send but because we're looking at the decompilation of this application in ghidra you might see a lot of different conventions for invoking methods basically ghidra is trying to be nice and it's trying to prettify some of the code for you so it looks like a c style type invocation but Actually, in reality, this is also going to be invoked with message send, but we don't need to worry about it too much. Basically, just know that there are multiple ways that you can actually see function calls when you're trying to reverse this inside of Ghidra, but they're all pretty much meaning the same thing. Let's move on and just look at a couple more examples here to get the hang of this. We have one more blur effect view function call. Looks the same style as this white BG view. I'll double check this. Again, it's returning an ID type for this blur effect view. So I'm going to go back. We're again getting the return value of this blur effect view method, storing it in ivar1. So I'm going to hit L to name this variable. I'll name this bar blur effect view object. So now we have our object. And you can pretty much ignore these Objective-C release calls. Basically, they're just releasing the memory that we did not let release previously. Remember this? So pretty much these you can ignore. Let's move on a little bit and just do maybe one more function call. So we're checking to see if our object is zero, maybe null. And then we are calling one more method. Remember, you can't expect any consistency in the actual method styles, but you should pretty much get the hang of all of the different method invocation styles that you'll see, which is returning another pointer to a blur effect style object. Let's go back. 
It's going to be storing this and kind of reusing this variable. Maybe I'll name this something more consistent like var temp object because we had already released it up here. But we're reusing that one and then we've got another actual method invocation. And this is invoking the UI blur effect class. Now this should just be a regular Objective-C class. This is not an Objective-C runtime value. And if we want to see, we can say, let's take this. Let's just look at our developer docs, docs one more time. I'm going to do this. And then I'll do, looks like I've already got it up, Apple developer documentation. So this is just a regular Objective-C class for your Apple development. But you can see if you wanted to check out what kind of object this is returning. But mostly I'm focusing on calling conventions, so let's just move on. Looks like inside of that actual class, we're calling this effect with style method. We have one colon, and then that means we're expecting one argument, which is going to be this temp object. Then we're going to be returning the return value of this effect with style method and storing this once again inside of our temp object. So we could continue on down through this, but hopefully you're getting the kind of idea of how to follow along and see what methods that this application is actually invoking inside of our particular function of interest. And we can go through and finish some of the calls inside of here. Here's another call for this uvar2 object and it's invoking the send subview to back method inside of there. Now what I want to do lastly is I just want to look at the actual source code of this method. So I picked this one on purpose because this is an actual library that's available on GitHub for Apple developers to be able to use. So what I want to do is I want to take the original source code and kind of compare and contrast it to what it looks like in Ghidra since I think that's one of the best ways if you're trying to learn a new convention for a particular language. So I'm going to open up my reference. This is going to be, remember, that LC action sheet class, which was defined here. And then we have our blur bottom BG view, which was our method name. So we can find that right here. And one interesting thing to note is that because of the way Objective-C actually performs this message passing, the original developer method names are going to be inside of your iOS application. So this is kind of nice because you can actually see what different naming conventions they were using, and they might kind of give an idea about what the method is doing if they're not obfuscated or anything. And if you have the source code, it's really easy to find the actual original implementation of it, which is what we're doing right here. So let me make sure you're able to see this. Let me just move that and scroll in. So this is what the actual source code looks like in Objective-C in our .m file. There was our method name. And if we look at it inside of Ghidra, you can see we have an additional parameter. What often happens is this first parameter inside of our method is just going to be a pointer to self or the current instance of the class. So I can just do L and name this arg self so that it's kind of clearer. So that if we're calling a method, maybe we're passing a reference to the current object to other ones. Let's go back to our source code and let's just kind of take a quick look about what was happening. First, we had our self.whitebgview.hidden equals yes, which makes sense because if we look at our code, we're calling this whitebgview method call, and then we're calling this set hidden method inside of here and passing the value one. And we can see yes probably means true, so it's going to be a Boolean value, which corresponds to the value one. And then we're seeing if not blur effect view, which we can find our if statement over here. We can see we got our object through this retain auto release return value. And then we're checking to see if this equals zero. So basically, if this is not actually instantiated. And then if that's true, then we're going to go through and do all of this instantiation code. So hopefully this is kind of clearing things up. And if you want, I highly recommend kind of going line by line and seeing if you can find the corresponding Objective-C in the source code as well as the decompiled code.
So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, we learned about Objective-C calling conventions for iOS reverse engineering. We saw how the output of the decompilation looked a little funny inside of our Ghidra decompiler, and how Objective-C actually uses this special convention called message passing in order to invoke methods. We also looked how we could check the Objective-C runtime documentation if we wanted to get an idea of what a particular runtime method was doing. And then we went through and we fixed some of our code to see how we could follow the actual flow of control inside of a method. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. I will not fail again. Probably.